Hi folks, so I recently watched a video by a chap called John who goes by the name of Orbiter A, I'll put a link to his channel up here. Um, up there, that'd be in front of my face, I'll put it up there instead. Um, and he got some of these arc transformers to play with. These are kind of ignition units out of gas boilers or stun guns or anything you want and you feed it with a DC voltage here and you get lots of volts out the end there. So I got myself one of these little 100 kV units to play with off eBay, it was about 17 quid and um, I thought I'd have some fun. So, this thing runs on somewhere between 6 and 9 volts at somewhere between 2 and 8 amps. Um, the more power you give it, the bigger the spark you can get. And when you put some power on it, I've got it on 6 volts 3 amps here, it makes spark. So, with 100,000 volts or so at my disposal, I thought, let's try and blow up some components. And the first thing I tried was this little red LED, and much to my surprise, I found that the LED didn't actually blow up at all and it lit up pretty much like normal. Um, I thought that was quite interesting, so I tried a few more and the green one seems to have no problem. And the little yellow one lights up quite nicely, no trouble there. And uh, oh, a little tiny orange one, brilliant effect from that one, very, very impressive. So, and the red one works nicely too. So I thought, if it can light up one, I mean, we've got no shortage of voltage here, so we should be able to do a bunch of LEDs in series. And sure enough, three LEDs in series lights up no problem. And so does four LEDs in series. Oh, well, they do when you get the wires in just the right place. We've got a, still got effectively the same spark to work with. We've only got an inch or so of spark, but four LEDs, no problem. Oh and uh, five LEDs when I get the red one the right way around because I've got it the wrong polarity so it's not lighting up but um, five LEDs also no problem lighting that up with the spark jumping between the legs on each one and I thought this was quite interesting because there's no kind of current limiting resistors on this or well there sort of is because of course the electricity is travelling through the air and the air's got a very high resistance and it's, it's ionising a column of air to make or ionising a channel in the air to make a path where the electricity can flow through, but that channel's still only carrying a milliamp or so, so the LEDs aren't blowing up. They don't need a current limiting resistor because the air's acting as a resistor. Now, I thought if this works for LEDs, then we can potentially make a power supply out of this thing. So I got myself a 10 volt Zener diode and I soldered a capacitor across it and uh, just because I wasn't sure if this would work, I've put this plastic tub on top of the capacitor in case it blows up the first time I try it. But as you can see here, put a bit of voltage across that Zener diode, and then the voltage across the capacitor, when I can get the probes to actually make a good connection, you'll see. Um, yeah, basically we're getting a nice regulated 10 volt power supply there. Now, I'm not sure how much current this had put out, so I made this little flashing LED circuit with a 555 timer. Um, a very simple circuit and you can see it's pulling between 12 and 17 milliamps which I suspect is going to be too high for our little spark um, and yeah you can see here that uh, unfortunately we don't have quite enough power to drive this circuit um, with the wires a bit closer we do get a tiny flicker out of that LED but I need to work on a more power efficient circuit for doing this but um, I thought this was kind of an interesting alternative wireless energy transfer. Um, mostly I just thought I'd share it with you. So um, thanks for watching and hope you found it interesting. Cheers folks. <laughs>